I've said about some of the earlier episodes that what we try to do is explore possible different societies that might grow up in the wake of the disaster. And this is the kind of worst sort of thing you can imagine. Uh, it's uh, a, a slaving community, really, uh, or it's a mine which has been reopened by a man who has a fanatical vision of supplying coal to the country because he realises that coal is once again the most viable fuel, indeed the only viable fuel. Um, and he's a man called Smithson, Professor Smithson, who is a, a professor of classical history who has used the old ancient Greek model as his model for forming a new society, which is to use slavery. And that's the situation that Tom and Greg find themselves in the middle of. And the rest of the family, by uh, using Billy, uh, who they track down uh, on the road, uh, are setting out to rescue them uh, from this terrible place, which is kind of a cross between a sort of a prison camp and a, and a, and a mine. It's, it's a really terrible place and a fantastic location, I have to say. The difference between Tom and Greg, I think, is really just a question of perspective. Uh, well, let me put that another way. There's a very clear difference between Tom and Greg. One of them is a murderer and one of them isn't. So I think that that would be, in their own minds, a fairly big distinction between them. But they're both men who use violence strategically. They're both men who have, in the past, uh, been guilty of allowing their emotions to get away from them. Obviously, in a funny sort of way, Greg is a much more emotional man than Tom. Uh, Tom is a man who uses violence calculatingly and ruthlessly and uh, only when he has to. Uh, Greg is a man who, when his emotions get away from him, loses his temper. Tom now blames Greg entirely for the fact that he's stuck in this terrible place, and of course Greg equally blames Tom. So between them there was always going to be a massive bust up. And also what we get in this episode is, is a kind of reconciliation of sorts between the two men, who I think at the end of the process, even though there's been a great deal of violence before, do have a greater understanding of each other. I always felt when I came to planning series two that, that Peter was going to play a significant role in it because I wanted to move that whole Abbey story to a, a, a very different place. But the, the whole point of uh, a lot of series one was her desperate search for her son, uh, her utter conviction that he was alive somehow. She didn't know, she just thought that he was. She sensed he was alive and she's right. So I think it gives a huge emotional pull through the series, this idea that uh, Peter is uh, not just a dream or a fantasy, but a real boy. If we think all the way back to episode one, there was the significance of the postcard, which has been referred to briefly in other episodes, but now the full story of the postcard is something that we're going to pick up in episode five and give some answers to. There is also going to be a very, very big shock indeed in episode five, something which uh, comes out of left field which uh, involves uh, two of the major characters. And it's a development that even now, even after I've created the storylines, even after I've seen the script, even after I've seen the finished version of the episode many, many times, uh, I still find it utterly shocking and it still makes me cry. Yeah.